The Bosnian War was an international armed conflict that took place in Bosnia and Herzegovina between 1992 and 1995. Following a number of violent incidents in early 1992, the war is commonly viewed as having started on 6 April 1992. The war ended on 14 December 1995. The main belligerents were the forces of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina and those of the self-proclaimed Bosnian Serb and Bosnian Croat entities within Bosnia and Herzegovina, Republika Srpska and Herzeg Bosnia, which were led and supplied by Serbia and Croatia, respectively. The war was part of the breakup of Yugoslavia. Following the Slovenian and Croatian secessions from the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia in 1991, the multi-ethnic Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which was inhabited by mainly Muslim Bosniaks 44%, as well as Orthodox Serbs and Catholic Croats 17%, passed a referendum for independence on 29 February 1992. This was rejected by the political representatives of the Bosnian Serbs, who had boycotted the referendum. Following Bosnia and Herzegovina's declaration of independence which gained international recognition, the Bosnian Serbs, led by Radovan Karadzic and supported by the Serbian government of Slobodan Milosevic and the Yugoslav People's Army JNA, mobilized their forces inside Bosnia and Herzegovina in order to secure ethnic Serb territory, then war soon spread across the country, accompanied by ethnic cleansing. The conflict was initially between the Yugoslav army units in Bosnia which later transformed into the Army of Republika Srpska VRS on the one side, and the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina Arba, which was largely composed of Bosniaks, and the Croat forces in the Croatian Defence Council HVO on the other side. Tensions between Croats and Bosniaks increased throughout late 1992, resulting in the Croat-Bosniak War that escalated in early 1993. The Bosnian War was characterized by bitter fighting, indiscriminate shelling of cities and towns, ethnic cleansing and systematic mass rape, mainly perpetrated by Serb, and to a lesser extent, Croat and Bosniak forces. Events such as the Siege of Sarajevo and the Srebrenica massacre later became iconic of the conflict. The Serbs, although initially militarily superior due to the weapons and resources provided by the JNA, eventually lost momentum as the Bosniaks and Croats allied themselves against the Republika Srpska in 1994 with the creation of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina following the Washington Agreement. Pakistan defied the UN's ban on supply of arms and airlifted missiles to the Bosnian Muslims, while after the Srebrenica and Markel massacres, NATO intervened in 1995 with Operation Deliberate Force targeting the positions of the Army of the Republika Srpska, which proved key in ending the war. The war was brought to an end after the signing of the General Framework Agreement for Peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina in Paris on 14 December 1995. Peace negotiations were held in Dayton, Ohio and were finalized on the 21st of November 1995. By early 2008, the International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia had convicted 45 Serbs, 12 Croats and 4 Bosniaks of war crimes in connection with the war in Bosnia. The most recent estimates suggest that around 100,000 people were killed during the war. Over 2.2 million people were displaced, making it the most devastating conflict in Europe since the end of World War II. In addition, an estimated 12,000 to 20,000 women were raped, most of them Bosniak. <laughs> Chronology There is debate over the start date of the Bosnian War. Clashes between Bosnian Muslims, Serbs and Croats started in late February 1992, and full-scale hostilities had broken out by 6 April, the same day that the United States and European Economic Community EEC recognized Bosnia and Herzegovina. Misha Glenny gives a date of the 22nd of March, Tom Gallagher gives 2 April, while Mary Kaldor and Laura Silber and Alan Little give 6 April. Philip Hammond, currently the British Chancellor of the Exchequer, claimed that the most common view is that the war started on 6 April 1992. Serbs consider the Sarajevo wedding shooting, when a groom's father was killed on the second day of the Bosnian independence referendum, 1 March 1992, to have been the first victim of the war. The Sijekovac killings of Serbs took place on 26 March and the Bajeljina massacre of mostly Bosniaks on 1-2 April. 
On April 5, when a huge crowd approached a barricade, a demonstrator was killed by Serb forces. The war was brought to an end by the General Framework Agreement for Peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina, negotiated at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, between 1 and 21 November 1995 and signed in Paris on 14 December 1995. Background Topic. Breakup of Yugoslavia The war in Bosnia and Herzegovina came about as a result of the breakup of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. A crisis emerged in Yugoslavia as a result of the weakening of the confederational system at the end of the Cold War. In Yugoslavia, the National Communist Party, the League of Communists of Yugoslavia, was losing its ideological potency. Meanwhile, ethnic nationalism experienced a renaissance in the 1980s, after violence broke out in Kosovo. While the goal of Serbian nationalists was the centralization of Yugoslavia, other nationalities in Yugoslavia aspired to the federalization and the decentralization of the state. Bosnia and Herzegovina, a former Ottoman province, has historically been a multi ethnic state. According to the 1991 census, 44% of the population considered themselves Muslim Bosniak, 32.5% Serb and 17% Croat, with 6% describing themselves as Yugoslav. In March 1989, the crisis in Yugoslavia deepened after the adoption of amendments to the Serbian constitution which allowed the government of Serbia to dominate the provinces of Kosovo and Vojvodina. Until then, Kosovo and Vojvodina's decision-making had been independent and both autonomous provinces also had a vote at the Yugoslav federal level. Serbia, under newly elected President Slobodan Milosevic, thus gained control over three out of eight votes in the Yugoslav presidency. With additional votes from Montenegro, Serbia was thus able to heavily influence the decisions of the federal government. This situation led to objections from the other republics and calls for the reform of the Yugoslav Federation. At the 14th Extraordinary Congress of the League of Communists of Yugoslavia, on 20 January 1990, the delegations of the republics could not agree on the main issues facing the Yugoslav Federation. As a result, the Slovene and Croatian delegates left the Congress. The Slovene delegation, headed by Milan Kukin demanded democratic changes and a looser federation, while the Serbian delegation, headed by Milosevic, opposed it. In the first multi party election in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in November 1990, votes were cast largely according to ethnicity, leading to the success of the Bosniak Party of Democratic Action, the Serbian Democratic Party, and the Croatian Democratic Union. Parties divided power along ethnic lines so that the president of the presidency of the Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina was a Bosniak, the president of the parliament was a Serb and the prime minister a Croat. Separatist nationalist parties attained power in other republics, including Croatia and Slovenia. <laughs> Beginning of the Yugoslav Wars Numerous meetings were held in early 1991 between the leaders of the six Yugoslav republics and the two autonomous regions to discuss the ongoing crisis in Yugoslavia. The Serbian leadership favoured a federal solution, whereas the Croatian and Slovenian leadership favoured an alliance of sovereign states. Izetbegovic proposed an asymmetrical federation in February, where Slovenia and Croatia would maintain loose ties with the four remaining republics. Shortly after that, he changed his position and opted for a sovereign Bosnia as a prerequisite for such a federation. On the 25th of March, Franjo Tudman and Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic held a meeting in Karadurdevo. The meeting became controversial in later months due to claims by some Yugoslav politicians that the two presidents agreed to the partition of Bosnia and Herzegovina. On the 6th of June, Izetbegovic and Macedonian President Kiro Gligorov proposed a weak confederation between Croatia, Slovenia, and a federation of the other four republics, which was rejected by Milosevic. On the 25th of June 1991, both Slovenia and Croatia declared independence, which led to a short armed conflict in Slovenia called the Ten. Day War, and an all out war in Croatia in the Croatian War of Independence in areas with a substantial ethnic Serb population. In the second half of 1991, the war was intensifying in Croatia. 
The Yugoslav People's Army JNA also attacked Croatia from Bosnia and Herzegovina. In July 1991, representatives of the Serb Democratic Party SDS, including SDS President Radovan Karadžić and Mohamed Filipović and Adil Zulfikar Pašić from the Muslim Bosniak Organization MBO, drafted an agreement known as the Zulfikar Pašić Karadžić Agreement, which would leave senior Bosnia and Herzegovina in a state union with senior Serbia and senior Montenegro. The agreement was denounced by Croat political parties. Although initially welcoming the initiative, Izetbegovic later dismissed the agreement. Between September and November 1991, the SDS organized the creation of six Serb Autonomous Regions (SAOs). This was in response to the Bosniak steps towards seceding from Yugoslavia. Similar steps were taken by the Bosnian Croats. In September 1991, the European Economic Community hosted a conference in an attempt to prevent Bosnia and Herzegovina sliding into war. On 25 September 1991, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 713, imposing an arms embargo on all of the former Yugoslav territories. The embargo hurt the Army of Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina the most because the Republic of Serbia inherited the lion's share of the Yugoslav People Army's arsenal and the Croatian Army could smuggle weapons through its coast. Over 55% of the armories and barracks of the former Yugoslavia were located in Bosnia, owing to its mountainous terrain in anticipation of a guerrilla war had Yugoslavia been invaded, but many of those factories such as the Uni's PRETIS factory in Vogoska were under Serb control, and others were inoperable due to a lack of electricity and raw materials. In September 1991, Croatian National Guard ZNG organized armed incursions across the Croatian border into Bosnia. ZNG opened mortar fire on Bosanska Dubica on 13 September 1991, and raided Bosanski Broad on 15 September 1991. On 19 September 1991, the JNA moved extra troops to the area around the city of Mostar, which was publicly protested by the local government. On 20 September 1991, the JNA transferred troops to the front at Vukovar via the Visegrad region of northeastern Bosnia. In response, local Croats and Bosniaks set up barricades and machine gun posts. They halted a column of 60 JNA tanks but were dispersed by force the following day. More than 1,000 people had to flee the area. This action, nearly seven months before the start of the Bosnian War, caused the first casualties of the Yugoslav Wars in Bosnia. Five days later, the JNA attacked the Croat village of Ravno in eastern Herzegovina on their way to attack Dubrovnik, and in the first days of October it leveled it, killing eight Croat civilians. The objectives of the nationalists in Croatia were shared by Croat nationalists in Bosnia and, especially, Western Herzegovina. The ruling party in the Republic of Croatia, the Croatian Democratic Union (HDZ), organized and controlled the branch of the party in Bosnia and Herzegovina. By the latter part of 1991, the more extreme elements of the party, under the leadership of Mate Boban, Dario Kordic, Jadranko Prilic, Ignac Kostroman, as well as local leaders such as Anto Valenta, and with the support of Franjo Tudman and Gojko Suzik, had taken effective control of the party. This coincided with the peak of the Croatian War of Independence. On 6 October 1991, Bosnian President Elijah Izetbegovic gave a televised proclamation of neutrality that included the statement, Remember, this is not our war. Let those who want it have it. We do not want that war. In the meantime, Izetbegovic made the following statement before the Bosnian parliament on October 14 with regard to the JNA, Do not do anything against the army, the presence of the army is a stabilizing factor to us, and we need that army. Until now we did not have problems with the army, and we will not have problems later. Throughout 1990, the RAM plan was developed by SDB and a group of selected Serb officers of the Yugoslav People's Army JNA, with the purpose of organizing Serbs outside Serbia, consolidating control of the fledgling SDS parties and the prepositioning of arms and ammunition. The plan was meant to prepare the framework for a third Yugoslavia in which all Serbs with their territories would live together in the same state. Journalist Giuseppe Zakaria summarized a meeting of Serb army officers in Belgrade in 1992, reporting that they had adopted an explicit policy to target women and children as the most vulnerable portion of the Muslim religious and social structure. The RAM plan is thought to have been drawn up in the 1980s. Its existence was leaked by Anti Markovic, the Prime Minister of Yugoslavia, an ethnic Croat. 
The existence and possible implementation of it alarmed the Bosnian government. Final political crisis On 15 October 1991, the Parliament of the Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina in Sarajevo passed a «Memorandum on the Sovereignty of Bosnia-Herzegovina» by a simple majority. The memorandum was hotly contested by the Bosnian Serb members of parliament, arguing that Amendment LXX of the Constitution required procedural safeguards and a two-thirds majority for such issues. The memorandum was debated anyway, leading to a boycott of the parliament by the Bosnian Serbs, and during the boycott the legislation was passed. The Serb political representatives proclaimed the Assembly of the Serb People of Bosnia and Herzegovina on 24 October 1991, declaring that the Serb people wish to remain in Yugoslavia. The SDA, supported by Europe and the US, was determined to pursue independence. The SDS made it clear that if independence was declared, Serbs would secede as it was their right to exercise self determination. The Croat leadership organized autonomous communities in areas with a Croat majority. On 12 November 1991, the Croatian community of Bosnian Posavina was established in Basanski Brod. It covered eight municipalities in northern Bosnia. On 18 November 1991, the Croatian community of Herzeg Bosnia was established in Mostar. Mate Boban was chosen as its president. Its founding document said, The community will respect the democratically elected government of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina for as long as exists the state independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina in relation to the former, or any other, Yugoslavia. Jovic's memoirs show that Milosevic had on 5 December 1991 ordered for the JNA troops in BIH to be reorganized, its non-Bosnian personnel to be withdrawn, in case recognition would result in the perceival of the JNA as a foreign force, left would be Bosnian Serbs to form the nucleus of a Bosnian Serb army. Accordingly, by the end of the month the JNA in BIH had only 10-15% from outside the republic. Silber and Little note that Milosevic secretly ordered all Bosnian-born JNA soldiers to be transferred to BIH. Jovic's memoirs suggest that Milosevic planned for an attack on Bosnia well in advance. On the 9th of January 1992, the Bosnian Serbs proclaimed the Republic of the Serbian People in Bosnia Herzegovina, senior BIH, later Republika Srpska, but did not officially declare independence. The Arbitration Commission of the Peace Conference on Yugoslavia in its the 11th of January 1992 opinion number no. 4 on Bosnia and Herzegovina stated that the independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina should not be recognized because the country had not yet held a referendum on independence on the 25th of January 1992 an hour after the session of parliament was adjourned the parliament called for a referendum on independence on the 29th of February and the 1st of March the debate had ended after Serb deputies withdrew after the majority Bosniak Croat delegates turned down a motion that the referendum question be placed before the not yet established Council of National Equality. The referendum proposal was adopted in the form as proposed by Muslim deputies, in the absence of SDS members. As Berg and Shoup notes, the decision placed the Bosnian government and the Serbs on a collision course. The upcoming referendum made international concern in February. The Croatian war would result in United Nations Security Council Resolution 743 on the 21st of February 1992, which created the United Nations Protection Force (UNPROFOR). During the talks in Lisbon on 21 to 22 February, a peace plan was presented by EC mediator Jose Cutelero, which proposed independent state of Bosnia to be divided into three constituent units. Agreement was denounced by the Bosniak leadership on 25 February. On 28 February 1992, the constitution of the senior BIH declared that the territory of that republic included the territories of the Serbian autonomous regions and districts and of other Serbian ethnic entities in Bosnia and Herzegovina, including the regions in which the Serbian people remained in the minority due to the genocide conducted against it in World War II and it was declared to be a part of Yugoslavia, the Bosnian Serb Assembly members advised Serbs to boycott the referendums held on 29 February and 1 March 1992. 
The turnout to the referendums was reported as 63.7%, with 92.7% of voters voting in favor of independence implying that Bosnian Serbs, which made up approximately 34% of the population, largely boycotted the referendum. The Serb political leadership used the referenda as a pretext to set up roadblocks in protest. Independence was formally declared by the Bosnian parliament on 3 March 1992. March 1992 unrest During the referendum on 1 March, Sarajevo was quiet except for a shooting on a Serbian wedding. The brandishing of Serbian flags in the Baskarsija was seen by Muslims as a deliberate provocation on the day of the referendum which was supported by most Bosnian Croats and Muslims but boycotted by most of the Bosnian Serbs. Nikola Gardovic, the bridegroom's father was killed while a Serbian Orthodox priest was wounded. Witnesses identified the killer as Ramiz Dalalik, also known as Silo, a minor gangster who had become an increasingly brazen criminal since the fall of communism and was also stated to have been a member of the Bosniak paramilitary group, Green Berets. Arrest warrants were issued against him and another suspected assailant. SDS denounced the killing and claimed that the failure to arrest him was due to SDA or Bosnian government complicity. A SDS spokesman stated it was evidence that Serbs were in mortal danger and would be further so in independent Bosnia which was rejected by Sefer Halilovic, founder of Patriotic League, who stated that it wasn't a wedding but a provocation and accused the wedding guests of being SDS activists. Barricades appeared in the following early morning at key transit points across the city and were manned by armed and masked SDS supporters. On 18 March 1992, all three sides signed the Lisbon Agreement, Elijah Izetbegovic for the Bosniaks, Radovan Karadzic for the Serbs and Mate Boban for the Croats. However, on 28 March 1992, Izetbegovic, after meeting with the then U.S. Ambassador to Yugoslavia Warren Zimmerman in Sarajevo, withdrew his signature and declared his opposition to any type of ethnic division of Bosnia, what was said and by whom remains unclear. Zimmerman denies that he told Izetbegovic that if he withdrew his signature, the United States would grant recognition to Bosnia as an independent state. What is indisputable is that Izetbegovic, that same day, withdrew his signature and renounced the agreement. In late March 1992, there was fighting between Serbs and combined Croat and Bosniak forces in and near Basanski Brod, resulting in the killing of Serb villagers in Sijekovac. Serb paramilitaries committed the Bajeljina massacre, most of the victims of which were Bosniaks, on 1–2 April 1992. Topic. Factions There were three factions in the Bosnian War Bosnian or Bosniak, loyal to the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Croat, loyal to the Croatian Republic of Herzeg Bosnia and Croatia. Serb or Yugoslav, loyal to the Republika Srpska and Fr Yugoslavia. The three ethnic groups predominantly supported their respective ethnic or national faction. Bosniaks mainly the Arba, Croats the HVO, Serbs the VRS. There were foreign volunteers in each faction. Topic: <inaudible> Bosnian. The Bosniaks mainly organized into the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Armija Republike Bosnije i Herzegovine, Arba as the armed forces of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Forces of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina were divided into five corps. First corps operated in the region of Sarajevo and Gorazda, while the stronger Fifth Corps was positioned in the western Bosanska Krajina pocket, which cooperated with HVO units in and around Bihać. The Bosnian government forces were poorly equipped and unprepared for war. Sefer Halilovic, chief of staff of the Bosnian Territorial Defense, claimed in June 1992 that his forces were 70% Muslim, 18% Croat, and 12% Serb. The percentage of Serb and Croat soldiers in the Bosnian army was particularly high in Sarajevo, Mostar, and Tuzla. The deputy commander of the Bosnian army's headquarters, was General Jovan Divjak, the highest-ranking ethnic Serb in the Bosnian army. General Stjepan Sajber, an ethnic Croat was the second deputy commander. 
Izet Begovic also appointed Colonel Blaš Kraljevic, commander of the Croatian Defence Forces in Herzegovina, to be a member of Bosnian Army's headquarters, seven days before Kraljevic's assassination, in order to assemble a multi-ethnic pro-Bosnian defence front. This diversity was to reduce over the course of the war. The Bosnian government lobbied to have the arms embargo lifted, but that was opposed by the United Kingdom, France and Russia. U.S. proposals to pursue this policy were known as lift and strike. The U.S. Congress passed two resolutions calling for the embargo to be lifted but both were vetoed by President Bill Clinton for fear of creating a rift between the U.S. and the aforementioned countries. Nonetheless, the United States used both black C-130 transports and back channels, including Islamist groups, to smuggle weapons to Bosnian Muslim forces, as well as allowed Iranian-supplied arms to transit through Croatia to Bosnia. However, in light of widespread NATO opposition to American and possibly Turkish endeavors in coordinating the Black Flights of Tuzla, the United Kingdom and Norway expressed disapproval of these measures and their counterproductive effects on NATO enforcement of the arms embargo. Pakistan's Inter Services Intelligence also played an active role during 1992 1995 and secretly supplied the Muslim fighters with arms, ammunition, and guided anti tank missiles to give them a fighting chance against the Serbs. Pakistan defied the UN's ban on supply of arms to Bosnian Muslims and General Javed Nasir later claimed that Pakistan's intelligence agency, ISI, had airlifted anti-tank guided missiles to Bosnia which ultimately turned the tide in favor of Bosnian Muslims and forced the Serbs to lift the siege. In his book The Clinton Tapes, Wrestling History with the President from 2009, historian and author Taylor Branch, a friend of U.S. President Bill Clinton, made public more than 70 recorded sessions with the President during his presidency from 1993 through 2001. According to a session taped on 14 October 1993, it is stated that, Clinton said U.S. allies in Europe blocked proposals to adjust or remove the embargo. They justified their opposition on plausible humanitarian grounds, arguing that more arms would only fuel the bloodshed, but privately, said the president, key allies objected that an independent Bosnia would be unnatural as the only Muslim nation in Europe. He said they favored the embargo precisely because it locked in Bosnia's disadvantage. When I expressed shock at such cynicism, reminiscent of the blind-eye diplomacy regarding the plight of Europe's Jews during World War II, President Clinton only shrugged. He said President François Mitterrand of France had been especially blunt in saying that Bosnia did not belong, and that British officials also spoke of a painful but realistic restoration of Christian Europe. Against Britain and France, he said, German Chancellor Helmut Kohl among others had supported moves to reconsider the United Nations arms embargo, failing in part because Germany did not hold a seat on the UN Security Council. Croat The Croats started organizing their military forces in late 1991. On 8 April 1992, the Croatian Defense Council Hrvatsko Vijetsa Obrain, HVO, was founded as the Supreme Body of Croatian Defense in Herzeg Bosnia. The HVO was organized in four operative zones with headquarters in Mostar, Tomislavgrad, Vitez and Orisje. In February 1993, the HVO main staff estimated the strength of the HVO at 34,080 officers and men. Its armaments included around 50 main battle tanks, mainly T-34 and T-55, and 500 various artillery weapons. At the beginning of the war, the Croatian government helped arm both the Croat and Bosniak forces. Logistics centers were established in Zagreb and Rijeka for the recruitment of soldiers for the Arba. The Croatian National Guard ZBOR Narodni Guard, ZNG, later renamed officially to Croatian Army Hrvatska Vojska, HV, was engaged in Bosnian Posavina, Herzegovina and Western Bosnia against the Serb forces. During the Croat-Bosniak conflict, the Croatian government provided arms for the HVO and organized the sending of units of volunteers, with origins from Bosnia and Herzegovina, to the HVO, the Croatian Defense Forces HOS, the paramilitary wing of the Croatian Party of Rights, fought against the Serb forces together with the HVO and Arba. The HOS was disbanded shortly after the death of their commander Blaš Kraljevic and incorporated into the HVO and Arba. Serb 
The Army of Republika Srpska was established on 12 May 1992. It was loyal to Republika Srpska, a Serb breakaway state that sought unification with Fr Yugoslavia. Serbia provided logistical support, money and supplies to the VRS. Bosnian Serbs had made up a substantial part of the JNA officer corps. Milosevic relied on the Bosnian Serbs to win the war themselves. Most of the command chain, weaponry, and higher-ranked military personnel, including General Ratko Miladic, were JNA. Paramilitary and volunteers Various paramilitary units were operated during the Bosnian War, the Serb, White Eagles, Beli Orlovi, Serbian Volunteer Guard, Srpska Dobrovoljaka Garda, Bosnians, Patriotic League, Patriotska Liga, and Green Berets, Zelin Beretki, and Croat, Croatian Defense Forces, Hrvatski Obrambin Snaj, etc. The Serb and Croat paramilitaries involved volunteers from Serbia and Croatia, and were supported by nationalist political parties in those countries. The war attracted foreign fighters and mercenaries from various countries. Volunteers came to fight for a variety of reasons, including religious or ethnic loyalties, and in some cases for money. As a general rule, Bosniaks received support from Islamic countries, Serbs from Eastern Orthodox countries, and Croats from Catholic countries. The presence of foreign fighters is well documented, however none of these groups comprised more than 5% of any of the respective army's total manpower strength. The Bosnian Serbs received support from Christian Slavic fighters from various countries in Eastern Europe, including volunteers from other Orthodox Christian countries. These included hundreds of Russians, around 100 Greeks, and some Ukrainians and Romanians. Some estimate as many as 1,000 such volunteers. Greek volunteers of the Greek Volunteer Guard were reported to have taken part in the Srebrenica massacre, with the Greek flag being hoisted in Srebrenica when the town fell to the Serbs. Some individuals from other European countries volunteered to fight for the Croat side, including neo Nazis such as Jackie Arklov, who was charged with war crimes upon his return to Sweden. Later he confessed he committed war crimes on Bosnian Muslim civilians in the Heliodrome and Dretel camps as a member of Croatian forces. The Bosnians received support from Muslim groups. Pakistan supported Bosnia while providing technical and military support. Pakistan's Inter Services Intelligence ISI allegedly ran an active military intelligence program during the Bosnian War, which started in 1992, lasting until 1995. Executed and supervised by Pakistani General Javed Nasir, the program provided logistics and ammunition supplies to various groups of Bosnian Mujahideen during the war. The ISI Bosnian contingent was organized with financial assistance provided by Saudi Arabia, according to the British historian Mark Curtis. According to the Washington Post, Saudi Arabia provided $300 million in weapons to government forces in Bosnia with the knowledge and tacit cooperation of the United States, a claim denied by U.S. officials. Foreign Muslim fighters also joined the ranks of the Bosnian Muslims, including from the Lebanese guerrilla organization Hezbollah and the global organization Al Qaeda. Prelude During the war in Croatia, arms had been pouring into the country. The JNA armed Bosnian Serbs and the Croatian Defence Force the Herzegovinian Croats. The Bosnian Muslim Green Berets and Patriotic League were established already in fall 1991, and drew up a defence plan in February 1992. It was estimated that 250–300,000 Bosnians were armed, and that some 10,000 were fighting in Croatia. By March 1992, perhaps three-quarters of the country were claimed by Serb and Croat nationalists. On 4 April 1992, when Izetbegovic ordered all reservists and police in Sarajevo to mobilize, and SDS called for evacuation of the city's Serbs, came the definite rupture between the Bosnian government and Serbs. Bosnia and Herzegovina received international recognition on 6 April 1992. The most common view is that the war started that day. Course of the war Topic: 
1992. The war in Bosnia escalated in April. On 3 April, the Battle of Kuppers began between the JNA and a combined HVHVO force that ended in a JNA victory. On 6 April Serb forces began shelling Sarajevo, and in the next two days crossed the Dina from Serbia proper and besieged Muslim majorities of Ornik, Visegrad and Foka. All of Bosnia was engulfed in war by mid-April. On 23 April, the JNA evacuated its personnel by helicopters from the barracks in Kapalgina, which was under blockade since 4 March. There were some efforts to halt violence. On 27 April, the Bosnian government ordered the JNA to be put under civilian control or expelled, which was followed by a series of conflicts in early May between the two. Prigidor was taken over by Serbs on 30 April. On 2 May, the Green Berets and local gang members fought back a disorganized Serb attack aimed at cutting Sarajevo in two. On May 3, Izetbegovic was kidnapped at the Sarajevo airport by JNA officers, and used to gain safe passage of JNA troops from downtown Sarajevo. However, Muslim forces dishonored the agreement and ambushed the leaving JNA convoy, which embittered all sides. A ceasefire and agreement on evacuation of the JNA was signed on 18 May, while on 20 May the Bosnian presidency declared the JNA an occupation force. The Army of Republika Srpska was newly established, put under the command of General Ratko Mladic, in a new phase of the war. Shellings on Sarajevo on 24, 26, 28 and 29 May were attributed to Mladic by Boutros Ghali. Civilian casualties of a 27 May shelling of the city led to Western intervention, in the form of sanctions imposed on 30 May through UNSCR 757. That same day Bosnian forces attacked the JNA barracks in the city, which was followed by heavy shelling. On 5 and 6 June the last JNA personnel left the city during heavy street fighting and shelling. The 20th of June ceasefire, executed in order for UN takeover of the Sarajevo airport for humanitarian flights, was broken as both sides battled for control of the territory between the city and airport. The airport crisis led to Boutros Ghali's ultimatum on 26 June, that the Serbs stop attacks on the city, allow the UN to take control of the airport, and place their heavy weapons under UN supervision. Meanwhile, media reported that Bush considered the use of force in Bosnia. World public opinion was decisively and permanently against the Serbs following media reports on the sniping and shelling of Sarajevo. Outside of Sarajevo, the combatants' successes varied greatly during this year. Serbs had seized Muslim-majority cities along the Dina and Sava rivers and expelled their Muslim population, within months. A joint Muslim HVO offensive in May, having taken advantage of the confusion following JNA withdrawal, reversed Serb advances into Posavina and central Bosnia. The offensive continued southwards, besieging Doboj, thereby cutting of Serb forces in Bosanska Krajina from Semberija and Serbia. In mid-May, Srebrenica was retaken by Muslim forces under Nasser Oric. Serb forces had a costly defeat in eastern Bosnia in May, when according to Serbian accounts a VDO Palak's force ambushed near Srebrenica, killing 400. From May to August, Gorazda was besieged by the VRS, until they were pushed out by the Arba. In April 1992, Croatian Defense Council HVO entered the town of Orisje and, according to Croatian sources, began a mass campaign of harassment against local Serb civilians, including torture, rape, and murder. On the 15th of May 1992, a JNA column was ambushed in Tuzla. 92nd Motorized JNA Brigade, stationed in Hazinska Buna, barracks in Tuzla, received orders to leave the city of Tuzla and Bosnia Herzegovina and to enter Serbia. An agreement was made with the Bosnian government that JNA units will be allowed until 19 May to leave Bosnia peacefully. Despite the agreement, the convoy was attacked in Tuzla's Brinska Malta district with rifles and rocket launchers, mines were also placed along its route. 52 JNA soldiers were killed and over 40 were wounded, most of them ethnic Serbs. The Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina was admitted as a member state of the United Nations on the 22nd of May 1992. From May to December 1992, the Bosnian Ministry of the Interior (BIHMUP), Croatian Defence Council (HVO), and later the Bosnian Territorial Defence Forces to RBIH operated the Celebici prison camp. 
It was used to detain 700 Bosnian Serb prisoners of war arrested during military operations that were intended to de-block routes to Sarajevo and Mostar in May 1992 that had earlier been blocked by Serb forces. Of these 700 prisoners, 13 died while in captivity. Detainees at the camp were subjected to torture, sexual assaults, beatings and otherwise cruel and inhuman treatment. Certain prisoners were shot and killed or beaten to death. By June 1992, the number of refugees and internally displaced persons had reached 2.6 million. On 6 May 1992, Mate Boban met with Radovan Karadzic in Graz, Austria, where they reached an agreement for a ceasefire and discussed the details of the demarcation between a Croat and Serb territorial unit in Bosnia and Herzegovina. However, the ceasefire was broken on the following day when the JNA and Bosnian Serb forces mounted an attack on Croat held positions in Mostar. By September 1992, Croatia had accepted 335,985 refugees from Bosnia and Herzegovina, mostly Bosniak civilians, excluding men of drafting age. The large number of refugees significantly strained the Croatian economy and infrastructure. Then US Ambassador to Croatia, Peter Galbraith, tried to put the number of Muslim refugees in Croatia into a proper perspective in an interview on 8 November 1993. He said the situation would be the equivalent of the United States taking in 30 million refugees. The number of Bosnian refugees in Croatia was at the time surpassed only by the number of the internally displaced persons within Bosnia and Herzegovina itself, at 588,000. Serbia took in 252,130 refugees from Bosnia, while other former Yugoslav republics received a total of 148,657 people. In June 1992, the Bosnian Serbs started Operation Verbas 92 and Operation Corridor 92. The reported deaths of 12 newborn babies in Banja Luka Hospital due to a shortage of bottled oxygen for incubators was cited as an immediate cause for the action, but the veracity of these deaths has since been questioned. Borisov Jovic, a contemporary high-ranking Serbian official and member of the Yugoslav presidency, has claimed that the report was just wartime propaganda, stating that Banja Luka had two bottled oxygen production plants in its immediate vicinity and was virtually self-reliant in that respect. Operation Corridor began on 14 June 1992, when the 16th Krajina Motorized Brigade of the VRS, aided by a VRS tank company from Doboj, began the offensive near Derventa. The operation was a complete success for the VRS. The Croatian Army HV lost, according to Croatian sources, around 12.000 men and it was pushed out from the cities of Birchko, Basanski Brod and Derventa back into Croatia. The Croatian Defense Council HVO was pushed out of Ojik but still controlled Orisje. Arba suffered heavy losses. On 21 June 1992, Bosniak forces entered the Bosnian Serb village of Rotkovici near Srebrenica and murdered 24 Serb civilians. In June 1992, the UNPRO 4, originally deployed in Croatia, had its mandate extended into Bosnia and Herzegovina, initially to protect the Sarajevo International Airport. In September, the role of UNPRO 4 was expanded to protect humanitarian aid and assist relief delivery in the whole Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as to help protect civilian refugees when required by the Red Cross. On 4 August 1992, the IV Night Motorized Brigade of the Arba attempted to break through the circle surrounding Sarajevo, and a fierce battle ensued between the Arba and the VRS in and around the damaged FAMOS factory in the suburb of Hraznica. The VRS repelled the attack, but failed to take Hraznica in a decisive counterattack. On 12 August 1992, the name of the Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina was changed to Republika Srpska. RS. By November 1992, 400 square miles of eastern Bosnia was under Muslim control. <laughs> Croat Bosniak relations in late 1992 The Croat-Bosniak alliance, formed at the beginning of the war, was often not harmonious. The existence of two parallel commands caused problems in coordinating the two armies against the VRS. An attempt to create a joint HVO and to military headquarters in mid-April failed. On 21 July 1992, the Agreement on Friendship and Cooperation was signed by Tudman and Izetbegovic, establishing a military cooperation between the two armies. 
At a session held on 6 August, the Bosnian presidency accepted HVO as an integral part of the Bosnian armed forces. Despite these attempts, tensions steadily increased throughout the second half of 1992. An armed conflict occurred in Busovaca in early May and another one on 13 June. On 19 June, a conflict between the units of the two on one side, and HVO and HOS units on the other side broke out in Novi Travnik. Incidents were also recorded in Konyac in July, and in Kisiljak and the Croat settlement of Stup in Sarajevo during August. On 14 September, the Constitutional Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina declared the proclamation of Herzeg Bosnia unconstitutional. On 18 October, a dispute over a gas station near Novi Travnik that was shared by both armies escalated into an armed one in the town centre. The situation worsened after HVO commander Ivica Stojic was killed near Travnik on 20 October. On the same day, fighting escalated on an Arba roadblock set on the main road through the Lasva Valley. Spontaneous clashes spread throughout the region and resulted in almost 50 casualties until a ceasefire was negotiated by the UNPROFOR on 21 October. On 23 October, a major battle between the Arba and the HVO started in the town of Prozor in northern Herzegovina and resulted in an HVO victory. On 29 October, the VRS captured Jace. The town was defended by both the HVO and the Arba, but the lack of cooperation, as well as an advantage in troop size and firepower for the VRS, led to the fall of the town. Croat refugees from Jace fled to Herzegovina and Croatia, while around 20,000 Bosniak refugees settled in Travnik, Novi Travnik, Vitez, Busovaca, and villages near Zenica. Despite the October confrontations, and with each side blaming the other for the fall of Jace, there were no large-scale clashes and a general military alliance was still in effect. Tudman and Izetbegovic met in Zagreb on 1 November 1992 and agreed to establish a joint command of HVO and Arba. Topic 1993. On 7 7 January 1993, Orthodox Christmas Day, 8th Operational Unit Srebrenica, a unit of the Arba under the command of Nasser Oric, attacked the village of Kravica near Bratunac. 46 Serbs died in the attack, 35 soldiers and 11 civilians. The attack on a holiday was intentional, as the Serbs were unprepared. The Bosniak forces used the Srebrenica safe zone where no military was allowed to carry out attacks on Serb villages including Kravica, and then flee back into the safe zone before the VRS could catch them. 119 Serb civilians and 424 Serb soldiers died in Bratunac during the war. Republika Srpska claimed that the Arba forces torched Serb homes and massacred civilians. However, this could not be independently verified during the ICTY trials, which concluded that many homes were already previously destroyed and that the siege of Srebrenica caused hunger, forcing Bosniaks to attack nearby Serb villages to acquire food and weapons to survive. In 2006, Oric was found guilty by the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia ICTY on the charges of not preventing murder of Serbs, but was subsequently acquitted of all charges on appeal. On the 16th of January 1993, soldiers of the Arba attacked the Bosnian Serb village of Skalani near Srebrenica. 69 people were killed, 185 were wounded. Among the victims were six children. On 8 January 1993, the Serbs killed the deputy prime minister of the RBIH Hakija Tarajlik after stopping the UN convoy taking him from the airport. Numerous peace plans were proposed by the UN, the United States, and the European Community, EC, but with little impact on the war. The most notable proposal was the Vance Owen Peace Plan, revealed in January 1993. The plan was presented by the UN Special Envoy Cyrus Vance and EC Representative David Owen. It envisioned Bosnia and Herzegovina as a decentralized state with ten autonomous provinces. On the 22nd of February 1993, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 808 that decided that an international tribunal shall be established for the prosecution of persons responsible for serious violations of international humanitarian law. On 15–16 May, the Vance Owen peace plan was rejected on a referendum. 
The peace plan was viewed by some as one of the factors leading to the escalation of the Croat Bosniak conflict in central Bosnia. On 25 May 1993, the International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia was formally established by Resolution 827 of the United Nations Security Council. On 31 March 1993, the United Nations Security Council issued Resolution 816, calling on member states to enforce a no-fly zone over Bosnia-Herzegovina. On 12 April 1993, NATO commenced Operation Deny Flight to enforce this no-fly zone. <laughs> Outbreak of the Croat-Bosniak War Much of 1993 was dominated by the Croat-Bosniak War. In early January, the HVO and the Arba clashed in Gornji Vakuf in central Bosnia. A temporary ceasefire was reached after several days of fighting with unprofor mediation. The war spread from Gornji Vakuf into the area of Busovaka in the second half of January. Busovaka was the main intersection point of the lines of communication in the Lasva Valley. By 26 January, the Arba seized control of several villages in the area, including Kakuni and Balalovic on the busovaka kisiljak road, thus isolating Kisiljak from Busovaka. In the Kisiljak area, the Arba secured the villages northeast of the town of Kisiljak, but most of the municipality and the town itself remained in HVO control. On 26 January, six POWs and a Serb civilian were killed by the Arba in the village of Desina, north of Busovaka. The fighting in Busovaka also led to a number of Bosniak civilian casualties. On the 30th of January, Arba and HVO leaders met in Vitez, together with representatives from Unprofor and other foreign observers, and signed a ceasefire in the area of central Bosnia, which came into effect on the following day. The situation was still tense, so Inver Haji Hasanovic, commander of Arba's Third Corps, and Tihamir Blaskic, commander of HVO's operative zone Central Bosnia, had a meeting on the 13th of February, where a joint Arba HVO commission was formed to resolve incidents. The January ceasefire in Central Bosnia held through the following two months and in the first weeks of April, despite numerous minor incidents. The Croats attributed the escalation of the conflict to the increased Islamic policy of the Bosniaks, while Bosniaks accused the Croat side of separatism. <inaudible> <inaudible> Central Bosnia the beginning of April was marked by a series of minor incidents in central Bosnia between Bosniak and Croat civilians and soldiers, including assaults, murders and armed confrontations. The most serious incidents were the kidnapping of four members of the HVO outside Novi Travnik, and of HVO commander Zivko Tadic near Zenica by the Mujahideen. The Arba representatives denied any involvement in these incidents and a joint Arba HVO commission was formed to investigate them. The HVO personnel were subsequently exchanged in May for POWs that were arrested by the HVO. The April incidents escalated into an armed conflict on 15 April in the area of Vitez, Busovaka, Kisiljak and Zenica. The outnumbered HVO in the Zenica municipality was quickly defeated, followed by a large exodus of Croat civilians. In the Busovaka municipality, the Arba gained some ground and inflicted heavy casualties on the HVO, but the HVO held the town of Busovaka and the Kaunik intersection between Busovaka and Vitez. The Arba failed to cut the HVO held Kisiljak enclave into several smaller parts and isolate the town of Fajnica from Kisiljak. Many Bosniak civilians were detained or forced to leave Kisiljak. In the Vitez area, Blaskic used his limited forces to carry out spoiling attacks on the Arba, thus preventing the Arba from cutting of the Travnik Busovaka road and seizing the SPS explosives factory in Vitez. On 16 April, the HVO launched a spoiling attack on the village of Amici, east of Vitez. After the attacking units breached the Arba lines and entered the village, groups of irregular HVO units went from house to house, burning them and killing civilians. The massacre in Amici resulted in more than 100 killed Bosniak civilians. Elsewhere in the area, the HVO blocked the Arba forces in the Stari Vitez quarter of Vitez and prevented an Arba advance south of the town. On 24 April, Mujahideen forces attacked the village of Miletici northeast of Travnik and killed four Croat civilians. The rest of the captured civilians were taken to the Poljanis camp. 
However, the conflict did not spread to Travnik and Novi Travnik, although both the HVO and the Arba brought in reinforcements from this area. On 25 April, Izetbegovic and Boban sign a ceasefire agreement. Arba Chief of Staff, Sefer Halilovic, and HVO Chief of Staff, Milovoy Petkovic, met on a weekly basis to solve ongoing issues and implement the ceasefire. However, the truce was not respected on the ground and the HVO and Arba forces were still engaged in the Busovaka area until 30 April. Herzegovina <inaudible> 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 The Croat-Bosniak War spread from central Bosnia to northern Herzegovina on 14 April with an Arba attack on a HVO-held village outside of Konjic. The HVO responded with capturing three villages northeast of Jablanica. On 16 April 15 Croat civilians and seven POWs were killed by the Arba in the village of Trusina, north of Jablanica. The battles of Konjic and Jablanica lasted until May, with the Arba taking full control of both towns and smaller nearby villages. By mid April, Mostar had become a divided city with the majority Croat western part dominated by the HVO, and the majority Bosniak eastern part dominated by the Arba. The Battle of Mostar began on 9 May when both the east and west parts of the city came under artillery fire. Fierce street battles followed that, despite a ceasefire signed on 13 May by Milovoy Petkovic and Sefer Halilovic, continued until 21 May. The HVO established prison camps in Dredel near Kapalgina and in Heliodrome, while the Arba formed prison camps in Patochi and in a school in eastern Mostar. The battle was renewed on 30 June. The Arba secured the northern approaches to Mostar and the eastern part of the city, but their advance to the south was repelled by the HVO. June–July offensives In the first week of June, the Arba attacked the HVO headquarters in the town of Travnik and HVO units positioned on the front lines against the VRS. After three days of street fighting the outnumbered HVO forces were defeated, with thousands of Croat civilians and soldiers fleeing to nearby Serb-held territory as they were cut off from HVO-held positions. The Arba offensive continued east of Travnik to secure the Rad to Zenica, which was achieved by 14 June. On 8 June 24 Croat civilians and POWs were killed by the Mujahideen near the village of Bikozi. The Mujahideen moved into deserted Croat villages in the area following the end of the offensive. A similar development took place in Novi Travnik. On 9 June, the Arba attacked HVO units positioned east of the town, facing the VRS in Donji Vikuf, and the next day heavy fighting followed in Novi Travnik. By 15 June, the Arba secured the area northwest of the town, while the HVO kept the northeastern part of the municipality and the town of Novi Travnik. The battle continued into July with only minor changes on the front lines. The HVO in the town of Kakanj was overran in mid June, and around 13 15,000 Croat refugees fled to Kisiljak and Vares. In the Kisiljak enclave, the HVO held off an attack on Kresevo, but lost Fajnica on 3 July. On 24 June, the Battle of Zeps began that ended with an Arba defeat on 30 June. In late July the Arba seized control of Bugajno, leading to the departure of 15,000 Croats. A prison camp was established in the town football stadium, where around 800 Croats were sent. At the beginning of September, the Arba launched an operation known as Operation Naretva 93 against the HVO in Herzegovina and central Bosnia, on a 200 km long front. It was one of their largest offensives in 1993. The Arba expanded its territory west of Jablanica and secured the road to eastern Mostar, while the HVO kept the area of Prozor and secured its forces rear in western Mostar. During the night of 8-9 September, at least 13 Croat civilians were killed by the Arba in the Grabovica massacre. 29 Croat civilians were killed in the Uzdal massacre on 14 September. On 23 October 37 Bosniaks were killed by the HVO in the Stupnidu massacre. The massacre was used as an excuse for an Arba attack on the HVO held Vares enclave at the beginning of November. Croat civilians and soldiers abandoned Vares on 3 November and fled to Kisiljak. The Arba entered Vares on the following day, which was looted after its capture. <laughs> May–June 1993 UN Safe Areas Extension 
In an attempt to protect the civilians, UNPROFOR's role was further extended in May 1993 to protect the safe havens that United Nations Security Council had declared around Sarajevo, Gorazda, Srebrenica, Tuzla, Zepa, and Bihać in Resolution 824 of 6 May 1993. On 4 June 1993 the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 836 authorized the use of force by UNPROFOR in the protection of the safe zones. On 15 June 1993, Operation Sharp Guard, a naval blockade in the Adriatic Sea by NATO and the Western European Union, began but was lifted on 18 June 1996 on termination of the UN arms embargo. The HVO and the ARBA continued to fight side by side against the VRS in some areas of Bosnia and Herzegovina, including the Bihać Pocket, Bosnian Posavina, and the Tassange area. Despite some animosity, an HVO brigade of around 1,500 soldiers also fought along with the Arba in Sarajevo. In other areas where the alliance collapsed, the VRS occasionally cooperated with both the HVO and Arba, pursuing a local balancing policy and allying with the weaker side. Topic 1994. The forced deportations of Bosniaks from Serb-held territories and the resulting refugee crisis continued to escalate. Thousands of people were being bussed out of Bosnia each month, threatened on religious grounds. In turn, in mid-1994, Croatia was strained by 500,000 refugees, and the Croatian authorities forbade entry to a group of 462 refugees fleeing northern Bosnia, and forcing UNPROFOR to improvise shelter for them. Markale massacre On 5 February 1994 Sarajevo suffered its deadliest single attack during the entire siege with the first Markale massacre, when a 120mm mortar shell landed in the center of the crowded marketplace, killing 68 people and wounding another 144. On 6 February, UN Secretary General Boutros Boutros Ghali formally requested NATO to confirm that future requests for airstrikes would be carried out immediately. On 9 February 1994, NATO authorized the commander of Allied Forces Southern Europe, CINCSOUTH, U.S. Admiral Jeremy Borda, to launch airstrikes at the request of the UN against artillery and mortar positions in or around Sarajevo determined by UNPROFOR to be responsible for attacks against civilian targets in that city. Only Greece failed to support the use of air strikes, but did not veto the proposal. NATO also issued an ultimatum to the Bosnian Serbs demanding the removal of heavy weapons around Sarajevo by midnight of 20-21 February, or face air strikes. On 12 February, Sarajevo enjoyed its first casualty free day since April 1992. The war is widely considered to have begun on 6 April 1992. The large scale removal of Bosnian Serb heavy weapons began on 17 February 1994. <laughs> Washington Agreement The Croat-Bosniak War ended with the signing of a ceasefire agreement between the HVO Chief of Staff, General Anti Rosso, and the Arba Chief of Staff, General Rasim Delic, on 23 February 1994 in Zagreb. The agreement went into effect on 25 February. A peace agreement known as the Washington Agreement, mediated by the U.S., was concluded on 2 March by representatives of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia and Herzeg-Bosnia. The agreement was signed on 18 March 1994 in Washington. Under this agreement, the combined territory held by the HVO and the ARBA was divided into autonomous cantons within the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Tudman and Izetbegovic also signed a preliminary agreement on a confederation between Croatia and the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Croat Bosniak alliance was renewed, although the issues dividing them were not resolved. The first military effort coordinated between the HVO and the ARBA, following the Washington Agreement, was the advance towards Kuppers that was retaken from the VRS on 3 November 1994. On 29 November, the HV and the HVO initiated Operation Winter 94 in southwestern Bosnia. 
After a month of fighting, Croat forces had taken around 200 square kilometers, 77 square miles of VRS-held territory and directly threatened the main supply route between Republika Srpska and Nin, the capital of Republic of Serbian Krajina. The primary objective of relieving pressure on the Bihać pocket was not achieved, although the Arba repelled VRS attacks on the enclave. Topic Unprofor and NATO NATO became actively involved, when its jets shot down four Serb aircraft over central Bosnia on 28 February 1994 for violating the UN no-fly zone. On 12 March 1994, the United Nations Protection Force made its first request for NATO air support, but close air support was not deployed, owing to a number of delays associated with the approval process. On 20 March, an aid convoy with medical supplies and doctors reached Moglai, a city of 100,000 people, which had been under siege since May 1993 and had been surviving off food supplies dropped by U.S. aircraft. A second convoy on 23 March was hijacked and looted. On 10 to 11 April 1994, Unprofor called in airstrikes to protect the Gorazda safe area, resulting in the bombing of a Serbian military command outpost near Gorazda by two U.S. F-16 jets. This was the first time in NATO's history it had ever done so. This resulted in the taking of 150 UN personnel hostage on 14 April. On 16 April a British Sea Harrier was shot down over Gorazda by Serb forces. On 15 April the Bosnian government lines around Gorazda broke. Around 29 April 1994, a Danish contingent Nordbat II on peacekeeping duty in Bosnia, as part of UNPROFOR's Nordic battalion located in Tuzla, was ambushed when trying to relieve a Swedish observation post Tango II that was under heavy artillery fire by the Bosnian Serb Sokovici Brigade at the village of Kalisija. The ambush was dispersed when the UN forces retaliated with heavy fire in what would be known as Operation Ballbank. On 12 May, the U.S. Senate adopted S-2042 from Senator Bob Dole to unilaterally lift the arms embargo against the Bosnians, but it was repudiated by President Clinton. Pub. L. 103-337 was signed by the President on 5 October 1994 and stated that if the Bosnian Serbs had not accepted the contact group proposal by 15 October the President should introduce a UN Security Council proposal to end the arms embargo and that if it was not passed by 15 November only funds required by all UN members under Resolution 713 could be used to enforce the embargo, effectively ending the arms embargo, on 5 August, at the request of UNPRO-4, NATO aircraft attacked a target within the Sarajevo exclusion zone after weapons were seized by Bosnian Serbs from a weapons collection site near Sarajevo. On the 22nd of September 1994 NATO aircraft carried out an airstrike against a Bosnian Serb tank at the request of UNPRO-4. On 12-13 November, the U.S. unilaterally lifted the arms embargo against the government of Bosnia. Operation Amanda was an UNPRO-4 mission led by Danish peacekeeping troops, with the aim of recovering an observation post near Gradakak, Bosnia and Herzegovina. On 25 October 1994, on 19 November 1994, the North Atlantic Council approved the extension of close air support to Croatia for the protection of UN forces in that country. NATO aircraft attacked the Udbina airfield in Serb held Croatia on 21 November, in response to attacks launched from that airfield against targets in the Bihać area of Bosnia and Herzegovina. On 23 November, after attacks launched from a surface-to-air missile site south of Otoka northwest Bosnia and Herzegovina on two NATO aircraft, airstrikes were conducted against air defense radars in that area. <laughs> 1995 On 25 May 1995, NATO bombed VRS positions in Pale due to their failure to return heavy weapons. The VRS then shelled all safe areas, including Tuzla. Approximately 70 civilians were killed and 150 were injured. During April and June, Croatian forces conducted two offensives known as Leap 1 and Leap 2. With these offensives, they secured the remainder of the Livno Valley and threatened the VRS held town of Bozansko Grahovo. On the 11th of July 1995, Army of Republika Srpska forces under General Ratko Mladic occupied the UN safe area 
of Srebrenica in eastern Bosnia where more than 8,000 men were killed in the Srebrenica massacre most women were expelled to Bosniak-held territory. The United Nations Protection Force represented on the ground by a 400-strong contingent of Dutch peacekeepers, Dutchbat, failed to prevent the town's capture by the VRS and the subsequent massacre. The ICTY ruled this event as genocide in the Kerstik case. In line with the split agreement signed between Tudman and Izetbegovic on of July, a joint military offensive by the HV and the HVO codenamed Operation Summer 95 took place in western Bosnia. The HVHVO force gained control of Glamok and Bozansko Grahovo and isolated NIN from Republika Srpska. On 4 August, the HV launched Operation Storm that effectively dissolved the Republic of Serbian Krajina. With this, the Bosniak-Croat alliance gained the initiative in the war, taking much of western Bosnia from the VRS in several operations in September and October. First one, Operation Una, began on 18 September 1995, when HV crossed the Una River and entered Bosnia. In 2006, Croatian authorities began investigating allegations of war crimes committed during this operation, specifically the killing of 40 civilians in the Bosanska Dubica area by troops of the 1st Battalion of the 2nd Guards Brigade. The HVHVO secured over 2,500 square kilometers (970 square miles) of territory during Operation Mistral II, including the towns of Jace, Sipovo, and Dravar. At the same time, the Arba engaged the VRS further to the north in Operation Sana and captured several towns, including Bosanska Krupa, Bosanski Petrovac, Klajus and Sanski Most. A VRS counteroffensive against the Arba in western Bosnia was launched on 23-24 September. Within two weeks the VRS was in the vicinity of the town of Klajus. The Arba requested Croatian assistance and on 8 October the HVHVO launched Operation Southern Move under the overall command of HV Major General Ante Godovina. The VRS lost the town of Mirkonjic Grad, while HVO units came within 25 kilometers 16 miles south of Banja Luka. On 28 August, a VRS mortar attack on the Sarajevo Markale marketplace killed 43 people. In response to the second Markale massacre, on 30 August, the Secretary-General of NATO announced the start of Operation Deliberate Force, widespread airstrikes against Bosnian Serb positions supported by UNPROFOR Rapid Reaction Force artillery attacks. On 14 September 1995, the NATO air strikes were suspended to allow the implementation of an agreement with Bosnian Serbs for the withdrawal of heavy weapons from around Sarajevo. Twelve days later, on 26 September, an agreement of further basic principles for a peace accord was reached in New York City between the foreign ministers of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia and the Fry. A 60-day ceasefire came into effect on 12 October, and on 1 November peace talks began in Dayton, Ohio. The war ended with the Dayton Peace Agreement signed on the 21st of November 1995. The final version of the peace agreement was signed the 14th of December 1995 in Paris. Following the Dayton Agreement, a NATO-led implementation force, Evor, was deployed to Bosnia Herzegovina. This 80,000-strong unit, heavily armed and mandated to fire at will when necessary for the successful implementation of the operation, was deployed in order to enforce the peace, as well as other tasks such as providing support for humanitarian and political aid, reconstruction, providing support for displaced civilians to return to their homes, collection of arms, and mine and unexploded ordnance clearing of the affected areas. Casualties Calculating the number of deaths resulting from the conflict has been subject to considerable, highly politicized debate sometimes, "...fused with narratives about victimhood," from the political elites of various groups. Estimates of the total number of casualties have ranged from 25,000 to 329,000. The variations are partly the result of the use of inconsistent definitions of who can be considered victims of the war, as some research calculated only direct casualties of military activity while other research included those who died from hunger, cold, disease or other war conditions. Early overcounts were also the result of many victims being entered in both civilian and military lists because little systematic coordination of those lists took place in wartime conditions. 
The death toll was originally estimated in 1994 at around 200,000 by Sharif Basuni, head of the UN Expert Commission investigating war crimes. Prof. Stephen L. Berg and Prof. Paul S. Shoup, writing in 1999, observed about early high figures, the figure of 200,000 or more dead, injured, and missing was frequently cited in media reports on the war in Bosnia as late as 1994. The October 1995 Bulletin of the Bosnian Institute for Public Health of the Republic Committee for Health and Social Welfare gave the numbers as 146,340 killed, and 174,914 wounded on the territory under the control of the Bosnian army. Mustafa Imamovic gave a figure of 144,248 perished including those who died from hunger or exposure, mainly Muslims. The Red Cross and the UNHCR have not, to the best of our knowledge, produced data on the number of persons killed and injured in the course of the war. A November 1995 unclassified CIA memorandum estimated 156,500 civilian deaths in the country all but 10,000 of them in Muslim or Croat-held territories, not including the 8,000 to 10,000 then still missing from Srebrenica and Zepa enclaves. This figure for civilian deaths far exceeded the estimate in the same report of 81,500 troops killed 45,000 Bosnian government, 6,500 Bosnian Croat, and 30,000 Bosnian Serb. <inaudible> RDC figures In June 2007, the Sarajevo-based Research and Documentation Center published extensive research on Bosnia-Herzegovina's war deaths, also called the Bosnian Book of the Dead, a database that initially revealed a minimum of 97,207 names of Bosnia and Herzegovina's citizens confirmed as killed or missing during the 1992–1995 war. The head of the UN War Crimes Tribunal's demographic unit, Eva Tabo, has called it the largest existing database on Bosnian war victims", and it is considered the most authoritative account of human losses in the Bosnian War. More than 240,000 pieces of data were collected, checked, compared and evaluated by an international team of experts in order to produce the 2007 list of 97,207 victims' names. The RDC 2007 figures stated that these were confirmed figures and that several thousand cases were still being examined. All of the RDC figures are believed to be a slight undercount as their methodology is dependent on a family member having survived to report the missing relative, though the undercount is not thought to be statistically significant. At least 30% of the 2007 confirmed Bosniak civilian victims were women and children. The RDC published periodic updates of its figures until June 2012, when it published its final report. The 2012 figures recorded a total of 101,040 dead or disappeared, of whom 61.4% were Bosniaks, 24.7% were Serbs, 8.3% were Croats and less than 1% were of other ethnicities, with a further 5% whose ethnicity was unstated. Civilian deaths were established as 38,239, which represented 37.9% of total deaths. Bosniaks accounted for 81.3% of those civilian deaths, compared to Serbs 10.9% and Croats 6.5%. The proportion of civilian victims is, moreover, an absolute minimum because the status of 5,100 victims was unestablished and because relatives had registered their dead loved ones as military victims in order to obtain veterans' financial benefits or for honor reasons. Both the RDC and the ICTY's demographic unit applied statistical techniques to identify possible duplication caused by a given victim being recorded in multiple primary lists, the original documents being then hand checked to assess duplication. Some 30 categories of information existed within the database for each individual record, apart from basic personal information, these included place and date of death and, in the case of soldiers, the military unit to which the individual belonged. This has allowed the database to present deaths by gender, military unit, year and region of death, in addition to ethnicity and status in war civilian or soldier. The information category intended to describe which military formation caused the death of each victim, was the most incomplete and was deemed unusable. ICTY figures 
2010 research for the Office of the Prosecutors at the Hague Tribunal, headed by Eva Thibault, pointed to errors in earlier figures and calculated the minimum number of victims as 89,186, with a probable figure of around 104,732. Thibault noted the numbers should not be confused with who killed who, because, for example, many Serbs were killed by the Serb army during the shelling of Sarajevo, Tuzla and other multi-ethnic cities. The authors of this report said that the actual death toll may be slightly higher. These figures were not based solely on battle deaths, but included accidental deaths taking place in battle conditions and acts of mass violence. Specifically excluded were nonviolent mortality increases and criminal and unorganized violence increases. Similarly, military deaths included both combat and non-combat deaths. Topic. Other statistics There are no statistics dealing specifically with the casualties of the Croat-Bosniak conflict along ethnic lines. However, according to the RDC's data on human losses in the regions, in central Bosnia 62% of the 10,448 documented deaths were Bosniaks, while Croats constituted 24% and Serbs 13%. The municipalities of Gornji Vikuf and Bugajno are geographically located in central Bosnia known as Gornje Povrbazja region, but the 1,337 regions documented deaths are included in Verba's regional statistics. Approximately 70-80% of the casualties from Gornje Povrbazja were Bosniaks. In the region of Naretva River, of 6,717 casualties, 54% were Bosniaks, 24% Serbs and 21% Croats. The casualties in those regions were mainly, but not exclusively, the consequence of Croat-Bosniak conflict. According to the UN, there were 167 fatalities amongst UNPROFOR personnel during the course of the forces mandate, from February 1992 to March 1995. Of those who died, three were military observers, 159 were other military personnel, one was a member of the civilian police, two were international civilian staff, and two were local staff. In a statement in September 2008 to the United Nations General Assembly, Dr. Harris Silogic said that. According to the ICRC data, 200,000 people were killed, 12,000 of them children, up to 50,000 women were raped, and 2.2 million were forced to flee their homes. This was a veritable genocide and sociocide." However, Silogic and others have been criticized for inflating the number of fatalities to attract international support. An ICRC book published in 2010 cites the total number killed in all of the Balkan Wars in the 1990s as "...about 140,000 people." Many of the 34,700 people who were reported missing during the Bosnian War remain unaccounted for. In 2012 Amnesty reported that the fate of an estimated 10,500 people, most of whom were Bosnian Muslims, remained unknown. Bodies of victims are still being unearthed two decades later. In July 2014 the remains of 284 victims, unearthed from the Tomasica mass grave near the town of Prigidor, were laid to rest in a mass ceremony in the northwestern town of Kozarak, attended by relatives. The UNCHR stated that the conflict in Bosnia and Herzegovina forced more than 2.2 million people to flee their homes, making it the largest displacement of people in Europe since the end of World War II. War crimes According to a report compiled by the UN, and chaired by M. Sharif Basuni, while all sides committed war crimes during the conflict, Serbian forces were responsible for 90% of them, whereas Croatian forces were responsible for 6%, and Bosniak forces 4%. The report echoed conclusions published by a Central Intelligence Agency estimate in 1995. Topic. Ethnic cleansing Ethnic cleansing was a common phenomenon in the war. This entailed intimidation, forced expulsion, or killing of the unwanted ethnic group as well as the destruction of the places of worship, cemeteries and cultural and historical buildings of that ethnic group. Academics Matjaz Klemenchik and Mitja Zagar argue that 
Ideas of nationalistic ethnic politicians that Bosnia and Herzegovina be reorganized into homogeneous national territories inevitably required the division of ethnically mixed territories into their Serb, Croat, and Muslim parts. According to numerous ICTY verdicts and indictments, Serb and Croat forces performed ethnic cleansing of their territories planned by their political leadership to create ethnically pure states Republika Srpska and Herzeg Bosnia. Serb forces carried out the atrocities known as the Srebrenica Genocide at the end of the war. The Central Intelligence Agency claimed, in a 1995 report, that Bosnian Serb forces were responsible for 90% of the ethnic cleansing committed during the conflict. Based on the evidence of numerous HVO attacks, the ICTY trial chamber concluded in the Kordic and Serkes case that by April 1993 Croat leadership had a common design or plan conceived and executed to ethnically cleanse Bosniaks from the Lasva Valley in central Bosnia. Dario Kordic, as the local political leader, was found to be the planner and instigator of this plan. Although comparatively rare, there were also cases of pro Bosniak forces having forced other ethnic groups to flee during the war. <laughs> <laughs> Genocide A trial took place before the International Court of Justice, following a 1993 suit by Bosnia and Herzegovina against Serbia and Montenegro alleging genocide. The ICJ ruling of 26 February 2007 indirectly determined the war's nature to be international, though clearing Serbia of direct responsibility for the genocide committed by the forces of Republika Srpska. The ICJ concluded, however, that Serbia failed to prevent genocide committed by Serb forces and failed to punish those responsible, and bring them to justice. A telegram sent to the White House on 8 February 1994 and penned by U.S. Ambassador to Croatia, Peter W. Galbraith, stated that genocide was occurring. The telegram cited, "...constant and indiscriminate shelling and gunfire." of Sarajevo by Karadzic's Yugoslav People Army, the harassment of minority groups in northern Bosnia, in an attempt to force them to leave, and the use of detainees, to do dangerous work on the front lines, as evidence that genocide was being committed. In 2005, the United States Congress passed a resolution declaring that, the Serbian policies of aggression and ethnic cleansing meet the terms defining genocide. Despite the evidence of many kinds of war crimes conducted simultaneously by different Serb forces in different parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina, especially in Bajeljina, Sarajevo, Prigidor, Zvornik, Banja Luka, Visegrad and Foka, the judges ruled that the criteria for genocide with the specific intent specialis to destroy Bosnian Muslims were met only in Srebrenica or eastern Bosnia in 1995. The court concluded the crimes committed during the 1992-1995 war may amount to crimes against humanity according to the international law, but that these acts did not, in themselves, constitute genocide per se. The court further decided that, following Montenegro's declaration of independence in May 2006, Serbia was the only respondent party in the case, but that, "...any responsibility for past events involved at the relevant time the composite state of Serbia and Montenegro." Topic. Rape An estimated 12,000 to 20,000 women were raped, most of them Bosniak. This has been referred to as mass rape, particularly with regard to the coordinated use of rape as a weapon of war by members in the VRS and Bosnian Serb police. For the first time in judicial history, the International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia ICTY declared that systematic rape and sexual enslavement in time of war was a crime against humanity second only to the war crime of genocide rape was most systematic in eastern bosnia eg during campaigns in foka and visegrad and in gerbovica during the siege of sarajevo women and girls were kept in various detention centers where they had to live in intolerably unhygienic conditions and were mistreated in many ways including being repeatedly raped a notorious example was karaman's house in Foka. Common complications among surviving women and girls include psychological, gynecological and other physical disorders, as well as unwanted pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> 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 
Prosecutions and legal proceedings The International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia was established in 1993 as a body of the UN to prosecute war crimes committed during the wars in the former Yugoslavia, and to try their perpetrators. The tribunal is an ad hoc court which is located in The Hague, the Netherlands. According to legal experts, as of early 2008, 45 Serbs, 12 Croats, and 4 Bosniaks were convicted of war crimes by the ICTY in connection with the Balkan Wars of the 1990s. Both Serbs and Croats were indicted and convicted of systematic war crimes joint criminal enterprise, while Bosniaks were indicted and convicted of individual ones. Most of the Bosnian Serb wartime leadership Bilhana Plavsic, Momčilo Kryznik, Radoslav Bradanin, and Dusko Tadic were indicted and judged guilty for war crimes and ethnic cleansing. The former president of Republika Srpska Radovan Karadžić was held on trial and was sentenced to 40 years in prison in 2016 for crimes, including crimes against humanity and genocide. Ratko Mladic was also tried by the ICTY, charged with crimes in connection with the siege of Sarajevo and the Srebrenica massacre. Mladic was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment by The Hague in November 2017. Paramilitary leader Vojislav Sechel has been on trial since 2007 accused of being a part of a joint criminal enterprise to ethnically cleanse large areas of Bosnia-Herzegovina of non-Serbs. The Serbian president Slobodan Milosevic was charged with war crimes in connection with the war in Bosnia, including grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, crimes against humanity and genocide, but died in 2006 before the trial could finish. After the death of Elijah Izetbegovic, The Hague revealed that he was under investigation for war crimes, however, the prosecutor did not find sufficient evidence in Izetbegovic's lifetime to issue an indictment. Other Bosniaks who were convicted of or are under trial for war crimes include Rasim Delik, Chief of Staff of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina, who was sentenced to three years' imprisonment on 15 September 2008 for his failure to prevent the Bosnian Mujahideen members of the Bosnian Army from committing crimes against captured civilians and enemy combatants murder, rape, torture. Inver Haji Hasanovic, a general of the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, was sentenced to 3.5 years for authority over acts of murder and wanton destruction in central Bosnia. Hazim Delik was the Bosniak deputy commander of the Celebici prison camp, which detained Serb civilians. He was sentenced to 18 years by the ICTY Appeals Chamber on 8 April 2003 for murder and torture of the prisoners and for raping two Serbian women. Bosnian commander Sefer Halilovic was charged with one count of violation of the laws and customs of war on the basis of superior criminal responsibility of the incidents during Operation Naretva 93 and found not guilty. Serbs have accused Sarajevo authorities of practicing selective justice by actively prosecuting Serbs while ignoring or downplaying Bosniak war crimes. Dario Kordic, political leader of Croats in central Bosnia, was convicted of the crimes against humanity in central Bosnia, i.e., ethnic cleansing, and sentenced to 25 years in prison. On 29 May 2013, in a first instance verdict, the ICTY sentenced Prilic to 25 years in prison. The tribunal also convicted five other wartime leaders of the joint trial, Defense Minister of Herzeg Bosnia Bruno Stoljic 20 years, military officers Slobodan Praljak 20 years, and Milivoj Petković 20 years, military police commander Valentin Čorić 20 years, and head of prisoner exchanges and detention facilities Berislav Puzik 10 years. The chamber ruled, by majority, with the presiding judge Jean-Claude Antonetti dissenting, that they took part in a joint criminal enterprise JCE against the non-Croat population of Bosnia and Herzegovina and that the JCE included the Croatian President Franjo Tudman, Defense Minister Gojko Suzik, and General Janko Babetko. However, on 19 July 2016 the appeals chamber in the case announced that the Trial Chamber made no explicit findings concerning Tujmans, Suzik's and Babitko's participation in the JCE and did not find them guilty of any crimes. Genocide at Srebrenica is the most serious war crime that any Serbs were convicted of. Crimes against humanity, a charge second in gravity only to genocide, is the most serious war crime that any Croats were convicted of. Breaches of the Geneva Conventions is the most serious war crime that Bosniaks were convicted of. Reconciliation 
On 6 December 2004, Serbian President Boris Tadic made an apology in Bosnia and Herzegovina to all those who suffered crimes committed in the name of the Serb people. Croatia's President Ivo Josipovic apologized in April 2010 for his country's role in the Bosnian War. Bosnia and Herzegovina's then President Haris Silajic in turn praised relations with Croatia, remarks that starkly contrasted with his harsh criticism of Serbia the day before. I'm deeply sorry that the Republic of Croatia has contributed to the suffering of people and divisions which still burden us today." Josipovic told Bosnia and Herzegovina's parliament, on 31 March 2010, the Serbian parliament adopted a declaration, "...condemning in strongest terms the crime committed in July 1995 against Bosniak population of Srebrenica," and apologizing to the families of the victims, the first of its kind in the region. The initiative to pass a resolution came from President Boris Tadic, who pushed for it even though the issue was politically controversial. In the past, only human rights groups and non-nationalistic parties had supported such a measure. <laughs> <laughs> Assessment Civil war or a war of aggression Due to the involvement of Croatia and Serbia, there has been a long-standing debate as to whether the conflict was a civil war or a war of aggression on Bosnia by neighboring states. Academics Steven Berg and Paul Shoup argue that, from the outset, the nature of the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina was subject to conflicting interpretations. These were rooted not only in objective facts on the ground, but in the political interests of those articulating them. On the one hand, the war could be viewed as a clear-cut case of civil war, that is, of internal war among groups unable to agree on arrangements for sharing power." David Campbell is critical of narratives about "...civil war," which he argues often involve what he terms "...moral leveling," in which all sides are "...said to be equally guilty of atrocities," and "...emphasize credible Serb fears as a rationale for their actions." In contrast to the civil war explanation, Bosniaks, many Croats, Western politicians and human rights organizations claimed that the war was a war of Serbian and Croatian aggression based on the Karadardevo and Graz agreements, while Serbs often considered it a civil war. Bosnian Serbs and Bosnian Croats enjoyed substantial political and military backing from Serbia and Croatia, and the decision to grant Bosnia diplomatic recognition also had implications for the international interpretation of the conflict. As Berg and Schoop state, from the perspective of international diplomacy and law, the international decision to recognize the independence of Bosnia-Herzegovina and grant it membership in the United Nations provided a basis for defining the war as a case of external aggression by both Serbia and Croatia. With respect to Serbia, the further case could be made that the Bosnian Serb army was under the de facto command of the Yugoslav army and was therefore an instrument of external aggression. With respect to Croatia, regular Croatian army forces violated the territorial integrity of Bosnia-Herzegovina, lending further evidence in support of the view that this was a case of aggression. Sumantra Bose, meanwhile, argues that it is possible to characterize the Bosnian War as a civil war, without necessarily agreeing with the narrative of Serb and Croat nationalists. He states that while all episodes of severe violence have been sparked by external events and forces, local society too has been deeply implicated in that violence," and therefore argues that, "...it makes relatively more sense to regard the 1992–95 conflict in Bosnia as a civil war albeit obviously with a vital dimension that is territorially external to Bosnia." In the cases involving Dusko Tadic and Stravko Music, the ICTY concluded that the conflict between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was an international one. F or the period material to this case 1992, the armed forces of the Republika Srpska were to be regarded as acting under the overall control of and on behalf of the FRI the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Hence, even after 19 May 1992 the armed conflict in Bosnia and Herzegovina between the Bosnian Serbs and the central authorities of Bosnia and Herzegovina must be classified as an international armed conflict. 
Similarly, in the cases involving Ivica Rajic, Tihomir Blaskic and Dario Kordic, the ICTY concluded that the conflict between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia was also an international one. F or purposes of the application of the grave breaches provisions of Geneva Convention IV, the significant and continuous military action by the armed forces of Croatia in support of the Bosnian Croats against the forces of the Bosnian government on the territory of the latter was sufficient to convert the domestic conflict between the Bosnian Croats and the Bosnian government into an international one. In 2010, Bosnian commander Egypt Ganik was detained in London on a Serbian extradition request for alleged war crimes. Judge Timothy Workman decided that Ganik should be released after ruling that Serbia's request was politically motivated. In his decision, he characterized the Bosnian War to have been an international armed conflict as Bosnia had declared independence on 3 March 1992. Academic Mary Kaldor argues that the Bosnian War is an example of what she terms new wars, which are neither civil nor interstate, but rather combine elements of both. In popular culture <inaudible> Film The Bosnian War has been depicted in a number of films including Hollywood films such as The Hunting Party, starring Richard Gere as journalist Simon Hunt in his bid to apprehend suspected war criminal and former Bosnian Serb President Radovan Karadzic, behind enemy lines, loosely based on the Grad incident, tells about a downed U.S. Navy pilot who uncovers a massacre while on the run from Serb troops who want him dead. The Peacemaker, starring George Clooney and Nicole Kidman, is a story about a U.S. Army colonel and a White House nuclear expert investigating stolen Russian nuclear weapons obtained by a revenge-fueled Yugoslav diplomat, Dusan Gavrik. In the Land of Blood and Honey, is a 2011 American film written, produced and directed by Angelina Jolie. The film was Jolie's directorial debut and it depicts a love story set against the mass rape of Muslim women in the Bosnian War. The Spanish, Italian 2013 film Twice Born, starring Penelope Cruz, based on a book by Margaret Mazzantini. It tells the story of a mother who brings her teenage son to Sarajevo, where his father died in the Bosnian conflict years ago. British films include Welcome to Sarajevo, about the life of Sarajevans during the siege. The Bosnian-British film Beautiful People directed by Jasmine Dizdar portrays the encounter between English families and arriving Bosnian refugees at the height of the Bosnian War. The film was awarded the uncertain regard at the 1999 Cannes Festival. The Spanish film Territorio Comanche shows the story of a Spanish TV crew during the siege of Sarajevo. The Polish film Demons of War 1998, set during the Bosnian conflict, portrays a Polish group of Ivor soldiers who come to help a pair of journalists tracked by a local warlord whose crimes they had taped. Bosnian director Donis Tanovic's No Man's Land won the Best Foreign Language Film Awards at the 2001 Academy Awards and the 2002 Golden Globes. The Bosnian film Gerbovica, about the life of a single mother in contemporary Sarajevo in the aftermath of systematic rape of Bosniak women by Serbian troops during the war, won the Golden Bear at the Berlin International Film Festival. The 2003 film remake, directed by Bosnian director Dino Mustafic and written by Zlatko Topsic, follows father Ahmed and son Tariq Karaga during World War II and the siege of Sarajevo. It premiered at the 32nd International Film Festival Rotterdam. The 2010 film The Abandon, directed by A.D.I.'s Backrack and written by Zlatko Topsic, tells the story of a boy from a home for abandoned children who tries to find the truth about his origins, it being implied that he is the child of a rape. The film premiered at the 45th Karlovy Vary International Film Festival. The 1997 film The Perfect Circle, directed by Bosnian filmmaker Adamir Kanovic, tells the story of two boys during the siege of Sarajevo and was awarded with the Francois Chalet Prize at the 1997 Cannes Festival. The Serbian American film Savior, directed by Predrag Antonijevic, tells the story of an American mercenary fighting on the side of the Bosnian Serb army during the war. Pretty Village, Pretty Flame directed by Serbian filmmaker Serjan Dragojevic, presents a bleak yet darkly humorous account of the Bosnian War. The Serbian film Life is a Miracle, produced by Amir Kasturica, depicts the romance of a Pacific Serb station caretaker and a Muslim Bosniak young woman entrusted to him as a hostage in the context of Bosniak-Serb border clashes. It was nominated at the 2004 Cannes Festival. 
short films such as In the Name of the Sun, about a father who murders his son during the Bosnian War, and Ten Minutes, which contrasts ten minutes of life of a Japanese tourist in Rome with a Bosnian family during the war, received acclaim for their depiction of the war. A number of Western films made the Bosnian conflict the background of their stories, some of those include Avenger, based on Frederick Forsyth's novel in which a mercenary tracks down a Serbian warlord responsible for war crimes, and The Peacemaker, in which a Yugoslav man emotionally devastated by the losses of war plots to take revenge on the United Nations by exploding a nuclear bomb in New York. The whistleblower tells the true story of Catherine Balkovac, a UN peacekeeper that uncovered a human trafficking scandal involving the United Nations in post-war Bosnia. Shot Through the Heart is a 1998 TV film, directed by David Atwood, shown on BBC and HBO in 1998, which covers the siege of Sarajevo during the Bosnian War from the perspective of two Olympic-level Yugoslavian marksmen, one whom becomes a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Drama series The award-winning British television series, Warriors, aired on BBC One in 1999. It tells the story of a group of British peacekeepers during the Lasva Valley ethnic cleansing. Many of the war's events were depicted in the Pakistani drama series, Alpha Bravo Charlie, written and directed by Shoaib Mansour in 1998. Produced by the Inter Services Public Relations (ISPR), the series showed several active battlefield events and the involvement of Pakistan military personnel in the UN peacekeeping missions. Alpha Bravo Charlie was presented on Pakistan Television Corporation (PTV). Topic: Documentaries. The BBC documentary series, The Death of Yugoslavia, covers the collapse of Yugoslavia from the roots of the conflict in the 1980s, to the subsequent wars and peace accords. A BBC book was issued with the same title. Other documentaries include Bernard Henri Levy's Bosna, about Bosnian resistance against well equipped Serbian troops at the beginning of the war, the Slovenian documentary Tunnel Upanja a tunnel of hope about the Sarajevo Tunnel constructed by the besieged citizens of Sarajevo to link Sarajevo with Bosnian government territory, the British documentary A Cry from the Grave about the Srebrenica massacre. Portuguese director Joaquim Sapino's documental film Diary Bosnia Diaries, generated much controversy, being an unengaged European look over the Bosnian conflict in the first person. Silver Bullet Films worked on a documentary, Village of the Forgotten Widows, which depicts the suffering of women affected by the Srebrenica massacre. Watchers of the Sky is a 2014 documentary about the life of Raphael Lemkin and his efforts to establish genocide as a legal concept in international law. The film discusses the events in Srebrenica and General Mladic's involvement in the killings. Miracle in Bosnia is a 1995 documentary film shot on the occasion of the third anniversary of the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It premiered at the 1995 Cannes Film Festival and won the special award. Books Samezdin Mamedinovic's Sarajevo Blues and Milenko Jurgovic's Sarajevo Marlboro are among the best known books written during the war in Bosnia. Zlata's Diary is a published diary kept by a young girl, Zlata Filipovic, which chronicles her life in Sarajevo from 1991 to 1993. Because of the diary, she is sometimes referred to as the Anne Frank of Sarajevo. The Bosnia List by Kenan Trebinchevich and Susan Shapiro chronicles the war through the eyes of a Bosnian refugee returning home for the first time after 18 years in New York. Other works about the war include Bosnia Warriors, Living on the Front Line, by Major von Kent Payne is an account of UN operations in Bosnia written by a British Army infantry officer who was based in Vitez, central Bosnia for seven months in 1993. Necessary Targets by Eve Ensler. Winter Warriors, Across Bosnia with the PBI by Les Howard, a factual account by a British territorial infantryman who volunteered to serve as a UN peacekeeper in the latter stages of the war, and during the first stages of the NATO-led Dayton Peace Accord. Pretty Birds, by Scott Simon, depicts a teenage girl in Sarajevo, once a basketball player on her high school team, who becomes a sniper. The Cellist of Sarajevo, by Stephen Galloway, is a novel following the stories of four people living in Sarajevo during the war. 
Life's Too Short to Forgive, written in 2005 by Len Beiser, follows the efforts of three people who unite to assassinate Karadzic to stop Serb atrocities. Fool's Rush In, written by Bill Carter, tells the story of a man who helped bring U2 to a landmark Sarajevo concert. Evil Doesn't Live Here, by Daud Sarhandi and Alina Babak, presents 180 posters created by Bosnian artist which plastered walls during the war. The Avenger by Frederick Forsyth. Hotel Sarajevo by Jack Kirsch. Top Je Bio v Rio by Vladimir Kekmanovic, a story of a Bosnian Serb boy in the part of Sarajevo held by Bosnian Muslim forces during the siege of Sarajevo. I Bog Je Zaplakau nad Bosnam and God Cried Over Bosnia, written by Momer Kurzmanovic, is a depiction of war that mainly focuses on the crimes committed by Muslim people. Safe Area Gorazda is a graphic novel by Joe Sacco about the war in eastern Bosnia. Dampier is an Italian comic book, created by Mauro Bozzelli and Maurizio Colombo and published in Italy by Sergio Bonelli Editor about Harlan Draca, half-human, half-vampire, who wages war on the multifaceted forces of evil. The first two episodes are located in Bosnia and Herzegovina number one Il Figlio del Diavolo i.e. Sarajevo number two La Sturpe della Note during the Bosnian War. Goodbye Sarajevo, a true story of courage, love and survival by A.T.K.A. Reed and Hannah Schofield and published in 2011, is the story of two sisters from Sarajevo and their separate experiences of the war. Love Thy Neighbor, a story of war by Peter Moss, published in 1997 as his account as a reporter at the height of the Bosnian War. My War Gone By, I Miss It So by Anthony Lloyd is a memoir of Lloyd's time spent covering the conflict as a photojournalist and writer. Topic. Music U2's Miss Sarajevo is among the best known pieces of music about the war in Bosnia. The song features Bono and Luciano Pavarotti. Other songs include Bosnia by the Cranberries, Sarajevo by UHF, Christmas Eve, Sarajevo 1224 by Savitage and Trans Siberian Orchestra, Pure Massacre by Silverchair and others. Topic. Games The 2014 Polish video game developed by 11-Bit Studios, This War of Mine, is based on the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, focusing on the civilian population surviving in the besieged city. Topic. See also. Bosnian War Portal List of massacres in the Bosnian War 1991 Population Census in Bosnia and Herzegovina 1995 NATO Bombing in Bosnia and Herzegovina Bosnian Genocide Bosnian Mujahideen Joint Criminal Enterprise Command Responsibility High Representative for Bosnia and Herzegovina Landmine contamination in Bosnia and Herzegovina Peace plans offered before and during the Bosnian War Role of the media in the Yugoslav Wars Foreign fighters in the Bosnian War